The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida. And I am fortunate to be joined this morning by our man, Basil Chapman, filling in for Tom. Basil, good morning. You forgot to say up in cold Massachusetts. Well, you know, it's a little cool by Florida standards in Florida, but that's only meaning it was about 62 degrees when I woke up. It's probably 70 oh, by now. But I heard, what I'll do we got going it. on up in beautiful Massachusetts this morning for cold, Basil? Yeah, it's actually not too bad, but we are on our way towards winter. There's no question about it. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, man. For Florida, we enjoy that cool air. And like you said, I mean, you guys are in November, right? It's all but to be expected. November especially, you might get a little warmth. You might get a little snow, that's for sure. The markets, we got a little red to start things off from Monday trading. The Dow right now off 100 points flat at 27,580. S&P's off 11 points, 3,082. NASDAQ off 36 points, trading at 84.39. And Russell off about 7 points. All the indices right at around 4 tenths percent in the red. We get the VIX with a little bit of elevation this morning. And uh, commodities as well, Basil. Now, of course, we got the bonds closed for Veterans Day. Happy veterans to all the veterans out there that serve. Thank you for your service. And uh, so bonds close, markets open, a little bit of slower activity possibly in the market with that holiday. Some, st some schools closed. We have school vacations, I know, on some. Crude oil catching quite a bit right now in the last hour, back above $57, $57.14. We got the gold contract pulling back after, actually at $14.58 right now. Quite a tough week for gold last week. And jumping over to the markets real briefly, s and is catching a little bit of a bid at about 945. Pretty tight trading range, all things considered, from about 3,078 up to 3,082. And then you look at the NASDAQ 100. Again, we got a little bit of a spike lower just after the opening bell, but we're kind of right back where we were trading since about 4 a.m. And Dow 30, pretty similar territory. We got some action going over in Hong Kong, unfortunately, with the protests over there. One of the protesters, I believe, had died. We have another fire going on. So that's some unrest. The market's getting hit over there. And then I got to start it off with Basil. I referenced it at the top of the newscast. These numbers are beginning to be staggering. They're staggering already when you deal with the U.S. in terms of what Amazon puts out. But when Alibaba has their sales days and they get to encompass China and the billions of people they have, 30 billion, and that's U.S. dollars in sales in 24 hours for their singles day. That happens on 11-11. They call it double 11 day, I guess, as there as well. And you're talking about last year, it was 213 billion won. And it looks like this year they've surpassed that record. And they're at 30.5 billion on Monday afternoon. And it's going to keep rising through the rest of the day. And this is the 11th edition of that singles event also called Double Eleven Shopping Festival because it falls on 11-11. Pretty remarkable. But I should also mention, Tommy, that if you look at Alibaba, <clears throat> it made a high back in 2018, back in June. So that's prior to the last 11-11. Okay. So it made an all-time high of 211.70. During that uh, last uh, couple of months plunge, in 2018, it get, uh, did get down to 130, but it then rallied very sharply into the 190, I think it was 197, uh, 195 area in May, pulled back again down to the 148, tried to rally, and this is very interesting because it is down about five points today at 182.33. So I don't know whether there's a disappointment because it's not as good as everyone thought. But I'm just I'm, I'm rather intrigued <clears throat> at the fact that these are absolutely, as you mentioned, staggering numbers. I mean, we're talking about in a day, it's probably the gross national product of at least 100 countries, right? Right. I mean, just it's, um, it's almost incomprehensible. You know, it's, it's something you almost can't even understand when you talk about that many dollars, 30 billion in 24 hours. Yeah. 
Right. So I'm just saying that this is a peak D in the Chapman wave right now. In the daily, it's probably a peak D if there's no new recovery high above the high of last week, which is 188.28. And in the monthly chart, it's just kind of in the middle of the range. So I don't know what people are expecting because these are absolutely astounding numbers. And I believe, you know, part of what may be happening in Basel is that I believe there are reports out there that the Hong Kong police had shot a protester in the city. Yes. And they're still dealing with another death out there. So I think it's a little bit because I agree. I mean, you know, now, number one, that's going to be priced in. I think the market knew that they were going to have a, a banner day, right? Probably a record breaking day. So nothing too surprising. When you look at the chart, though, and I got it up on a short time frame. Quite a little acceleration, even off the opening bell. We were just at 184. You spiked down to a 181 range. We're sitting down 2.5% on a day that they are grossing $30 billion. But uh, the unrest in Hong Kong, you have protesters again out there. You have police shooting a protester, and I believe Maybe you Maybe looking out, right. Yeah, it's and I just... believe you had somebody, I mean, the... I'm going to pull up a headline and, and just even a, an image. I wasn't I'm sure they, they died, but I know that there was a shooting. Was yeah, a and there was a death. Actually. What happened was last week. So yes. they were grieving that death of, of a protester, I guess, falling off a parking garage. And then you had somebody getting shot, though, and there were reports of somebody on fire as well. And the imagery is pretty um, inflammatory. And so I think the market just fearing that they're not sure how that's going to end. And, of course, any type of really unrest in China, that's where their market is in Alibaba. So maybe that just pulling back that stock a bit, down 2.5 percent um, on the day so far. And now Amazon here. Uh, it's also kind of struggling, 2,050 20, 20, high back in September of 2018, plunges to 1307, soars back to 2035, just, what, 15 points off the all-time high, but then fails again. July comes back down, goes to the under, under 1,700, and now it's trading uh, down 15, 1,769. I think a lot, of these, um, a lot of these stocks are looking tired. They've had... Certainly, the ones that have led, like the deep cyclicals, like the United Technologies, et cetera, they've had a fabulous run off the recent lows. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a digestive phase coming up here. Yeah, I mean, Amazon, right, with their last earnings, you could call it almost a little bit of a miss. That's where you got quite a flush down. I'll pull up their chart in the aftermarket. Um, but Amazon, I mean, it's tough to argue that they are not going to be around for the long haul, that they're not going to be making highs in the long run. And, you know, one of the major reasons that they had, uh, let me get closer time frame, because really they flushed down pre-market on their earnings. Uh, one of the reasons why they struggled so much, and there it is, down to about 1620, which is remarkable. And by, you know, the, the close of the next day, you were back to almost even at 1760. One of the reasons why they had had that miss on earnings was because they're spending so much money to have same-day delivery, which seems like yes. one of the best things that you could spend money on in today's climate where people demand products now, if not, if not in 15 minutes, right? I mean, same day. And they pioneered it when they started Prime, and they had free two-day delivery. And I think they realized that that is the forefront of their technology in terms of being a deliverer of goods in a timely fashion at an affordable price. And so they're ahead of the curve there. So I think the market figured that out within 24 hours. And, and Tommy, once people get used to this, you can't really go back. I agree, Basil. You can only I, accelerate. I agree no, completely. No. You know, it's, and we're fortunate we live in Tampa, as in they have a big hub. Uh, I have friends that live a little bit further out, just even Lakeland and Bartow, which is a little bit further east of Tampa. You're only talking about 30, 45 minutes. But there's a one-day difference in the day that they can have their products delivered right now, just because you're a little amazing. bit away. And Amazon, they're yeah. spending money to fix that problem, exactly. Folks, Basil and I are coming right back. We'll be back in three minutes. Stay tuned. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got markets slightly in the red right now. And I'm going to jump over, Basil, if I can, to one of the stocks making headlines last week, and that being Uber. Their 180-day period expiring from their IPO. And, man, it just doesn't end in terms of the intriguing stories, you could say, uh, that come. So the news comes out just this morning that their former CEO and founder, Travis Kalanick, sells 20% of his stake right after the Uber lockup. Lock You're talking about more than half of a billion dollars he took out of that company. 43-year-old wow. selling more than 20 million shares. Uh, if you were paying attention to the market in Uber last week, quite a tough market for Uber. Part of that having to do with the volume of shares going on as insiders were basically able to dump any shares, the entire uh, lockup going away. And it's not often, Basil, that you see the founder and chief executive dumping a half a billion dollars of his position the day that he's allowed to, to the public. Uh, yeah, that, that, you know, you could, very often you see, because there's, there's financial planning that goes into the process, when the lockup expires, some money comes off because sure. it's just what you do, money management. Dumping, that's a, that's a lot. That's, and when you that's, look, not a very, that's not very enticing. It wasn't oh, buying, man. it was and we were selling. Just, we were just at $34.60 seven days ago, Basil, and we're sitting yeah. at $26. That's more than a 20% haircut from there. And if you back this up, I think it went, went public. To, at, the high was 46 Yeah, uh, right yeah there. $47, Four, yeah. and I think the IPO price was $45. Uh, just a remarkable collapse. And, you know, the only other thing, you, you play devil's advocate that you could play, and I really don't even want to because I'd be very skeptical at this price. Now, Uber in the long run, they're going to be around, all right? They almost, you could say, changed the world in terms of how we travel. But he is no longer the CEO. So uh, he kind of got forced out. Maybe he says, you know what, I don't want my entire wealth tied up in a company that I don't even get to run anymore. Uh, that could that could be part of the play, but man Correct. oh man, if you yeah. if you believe in the company, 
you wouldn't take $500 million out because you can always borrow against your shares. You know, it's, it's not like you're, you're not liquid cash when you have it. Um, so he's diversifying away from that company, and, and that just keeps going. And staying on the Uber headline, because their current CEO making headlines, he is not earning any praise this morning either, as I guess he had said pretty lightly about the murder of the journalist Khashoggi by the Saudi family, and he, uh, he dubbed it a quote-unquote mistake, and he's walking back those comments. But the fact wow. that both of them in the headlines today, after the battle that they had last week with those shares, probably not the Monday morning they were looking for after their lockup expired. Uber struggling this morning as well, down another 2% to start off Monday trading. Uh, last week's low, 25.58. That was the morning of the lockup, and uh, we're just coming about a dollar into that. So, Basil, we have a caller. We're going to jump over to Scott in Safety Harbor. Scott, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. I'm trying to figure out... Um Macy's. I mean, Ralph Lauren had a pop the other day. I thought it would move Macy's out of the 15s, but it's not. It's just stalled. I mean, we're coming up on season, and it's just, what's going on there, Tom? Boy, oh boy, Macy's. Lots of fundamentally to look at there, right, Scott, in terms of technically as well. We are coming into, I mean, Black Friday right around the corner. Just pulling up right now, Macy's up a bit, up two pennies for the day, 15.90. We had some volatility even in the last week, huh, Scott? We are up to 16.83. Last Wednesday, you fade down. We made a low on Friday of 1560. You back this up and put it on a little bit of a longer time frame for some reference, man, and talk about volatility. Three-year chart, we're trading at $45 back in 2016. You make it down to $17 in 2017. You make it all the way back above $40 in August of last year, and then it's been basically a collapse down to 1593. Down to 14.11, yes. Yeah. But, Scott, there's a couple of things you need to look at. Number one is... In that whole retail sector, um, Macy's for years was a really uh, outstanding performer. They went all the way to the July 2015 high at 73.61, having just steadily gone up, uh, just like in a, like a channel on the way up, and walking the 14-period moving average just on the monthly chart, going all the way from the low that was established back in 2009 in the 9 area. So that was a very big move. But then every single thing, we were just talking about Amazon, every single thing changed for them. So I think it's now a different picture because they're in a weak sector. That's the bricks and mortar retail. They're in a weak um, in the terms of the chart formation, the smash, just the most latest <coughs> smash from the 40s down to 14. So there's a rectangle formation that if you look at between 14 and, and 17 in the, in the weekly chart, and that just basically says it could stay there a little longer. There could be pops to the upside. It's also trying to establish the 14 to 14, 35, 14, 50 area as a very important base for Macy's. But... I, they, they, you know, if you look at a Walmart, if you're looking at the Target, they've been very much involved in the online uh, aspect, and they've, they're competing now very favorably with Amazon. Where's Macy's? Macy's isn't in the picture. So I'd be a little careful here because it doesn't have, there isn't a story attached to it that I can see that could really ignite it to become a leader. But at any point in the next three weeks, if it happens to pop over 18, maybe there'll be the, um, the, the holiday sales. Maybe things will be improving, but I'd be a little careful with this other than quick trades because it's stuck in that range at the bottom of the of the rectangle. I mean, that's kind of just to I add. I think I'll stick with um, with Teva on my trading, but you know how I do, uh, Basil. It's a premium company, and it was beaten it down, is. so that's where I usually like to look. But the good advice for Macy's. Thank and, you very and much. And just if I could add to it, Scott, because it's a great question, man. I love trying to figure out, because this is one of those where the world is kind of changing, right? Where does Macy's fall into the, the mix? And I struggle to find it. Now, I, I have a Macy's card myself, right? So I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan. I get a million mailers from Macy's with the 25% off. It seems like I get them ad nauseum where they're meaningless percentages. Right. Bed, bed, this, bath, and beyond. Exactly, off. Basil. Right. I was and almost going to bring it up where they, they send out so many coupons that they've negated any real meaning for their coupons at this point. And uh, does anybody know? Could you even tell me right now? I was just thinking this as Basil was saying, 
what kind of delivery service Macy's has on their products, I, I'm completely unaware. And when you think about that. I agree with you, Tom, 100%. And for me, walking through that store with a wife, uh, and, you, you know, you see it with the, the woman's eye. She's like, you know, nothing pops here anymore. It's just this giant box here, and it's just all black and white, and it's just not I would agree. Out. And talk you about know? a huge store, right? You can find anything you want in there. Right. I love they have, you know, they have Ralph Lauren in there, a great section, which I love. I'm wearing, I think, Ralph Lauren right now. There you go. So, you know, I'm a fan. Um, but, boy, oh, boy, for the amount of money they charge, for the retail space they have to pay for, and um, and you and can these get these are fixed costs. Yes, there's no way they can change it. Whereas online, you can you can you know there are things you can do. But here, it's after you've got employees. Yeah, you know, it's it's tough. It's yeah, very tough. I imagine. I mean, their footprint would weaken our knees. Just their electric bill from from Westfield Oof. Mall there in, in in Tampa Bay. I mean, it's just got to be. I don't know, 40, 50,000 a month or I more. Agree. I mean, and that's really the exact ridiculous. one that I'm talking about, Scott, exactly. That's the one that I walk into, and I hear you, man. It's almost like I, I didn't even realize how much they offer in that store. You could get lost in it. And in today's day and age, you kind of don't need to be spaying, paying for that retail, especially when, like I said, tether. I don't even know. Do they do delivery for free? They might. I'm not sure, right? They better figure that out. Scott, thanks Thank for the you, call. Thank you, Tom and Basil. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Take care. We'll be right back, folks. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. I'm Tommy O'Brien, joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got markets hanging around negative territory right now. Dow off 105 at 27,575. You got the S&P's eight points in the red. NASDAQ 20 points in the red right now. And Basil, if we could jump over to gold, because gold's struggling again today on the heels of quite a tough week. Last week, you get the gold contract right now. This just even a short-term five-minute bar. Since about even 9.45 this morning, we've dropped about $10 from 14.63, now 14.53 in gold, as things get a little dicey for that yellow metal. This is very interesting because if you look at the monthly chart, that spectacular move that basically took it from about the, in the continuous contract from about 12.10, and that was uh, July a year ago, just steady incremental move, and then it pulls back, holds support, rallies sharply, pulls back, and goes all the way to the, uh, well, it's continuous contract, so the price will be changing a little bit within a few dollars of 1566, which was the last high in September. So to expect some kind of a pullback, I have 1433 as the nine period moving average support in the monthly chart. I wouldn't be surprised if we, if we get down there because um, this, when you think about it, gold is trades in its own world, but basically it's also a currency, I think of it as a currency of fear. And at this particular point, um, there's a relative international calmness. We haven't had, you know, the, the, the serious worries that were in front page headlines. Um, so that kind of pushes gold a little bit to, to, to the, um, the quiet side. And that's what I think is now it's just a big digestive phase. Yeah. To, I mean, that's a spectacular move. You can't Definitely. not expect that there's a, the, it's taking time, actually, when you think 1566 down to 1454. And it's been that it's been there since uh, did I say it was in April in September. Yes, September. It's, it's taken in the weekly chart. You can see it's taken time, slightly lower highs, slightly lower lows. This is going to be very important because if that uh, 1430 area gets taken out on a monthly basis, that says gold is going to take an even deeper and longer time out. So far, I'm treating it just as a kind of a rest period after okay. a spectacular move. And like you said, I mean, just a staggering run. Anytime you're looking at a run of that epic proportion and even just backing things up, uh, I have the GLD up here, but even just putting, um, and I'm going to show, I just want to pull up the, I was going to put, I'll get it up there. I was just going to put the Fibonacci retracement. I mean, it was just such a staggering run, Basil. You know, you have to expect it. And that's where, you know, market at all-time highs. We've had almost a 10-year run. We're coming into an election year, 12 months out from the election. You just want to keep your uh, keep those spikes up on the shoulders because gold pulling back as well. But you can't expect that it's just going to go up forever. I mean, you look from May and the GLD, we're sitting at 120, and you run up to 146. We're now back to 136. Not Not too remarkable. And what I am looking at is that the market vectors, which kind of in a way led the move up, it was funny because the gold stocks were acting way better, and then gold kind of followed, and silver was kind of dragged up. Now I'm looking at the GDX, the market vectors, gold miners ETF, pulling back a little bit, and um, it's at 26.21, had a high of 30.96. We've got to keep in mind that it came from the 17s in September of 2018. This is a, it's just over a year. It's a, it's a big move for gold. So, um, yeah, I think there's a well-earned rest period. That's what I'm looking at here. Yeah. Now, I just want to jump around to a couple of different of the other stocks flying right now. Basil, jumping over. Um, Walgreens Boots, pretty remarkable. The size of the company that they may be going private to pull them over. So we have a formal offer. I'm going to drill this down from KKR this morning, I believe. Quite a spike on Walgreens Boots, up about 6.23% or $3.68. Not quite to where we were last week when this started to get reported, but I'm going to pull up the news article right now that I have this morning. And you got... Let me just find this one. We'll get there. I just want to get the exact number. Now, obviously, the healthcare sector, I mean, talk about a sector rich in profits right now. KKR thinking that Walgreens is undervalued. So Walgreens jumping 5% on Monday after Bloomberg reported that the private equity firm KKR has formally made an offer to buy the international pharmacy giant, citing people familiar. Walgreens has been weighing whether to take the company private in what would be the largest leverage buyout in history. So KKR has a history with the retailer. Wow. In 2007, 
It bought Alliance Boots in partnership with Stefano Pessina, then the executive chairman of Alliance Boots. And uh, pretty remarkable that that size of the company, $60, $70 billion, I think that number's going to be, that they might take that private, seeing it undervalued. But Walgreens, man, there's one on every corner. There's a CVS on the other. And maybe they're saying that they should be capitalizing on that type of a market a little bit bigger than they are already. Think about this. The Wal Walgreens was back in 2015, was at 96, I think it was, 97.27 was the high in July of uh, 2015. And then I believe they took over Boots. Yes. So ever since then, it's been on its way down. And I'm, uh, on the one hand, I'm very impressed. On the other hand, I, I'm kind of astounded. Can you imagine the decisions you have to make <laughs> to be able to put that kind of money to work with not really knowing what's going to happen politically, um, yeah. in, uh, just financially, just the commitment to put that kind of money to work on the one hand, you've got to admire these people. On the other hand, you have to say, wow, what responsibility is that? Big so, risks, hoping for big rewards, probably, right? I mean, that would be they the have to be. Uh, they have to be. But I think also they're looking at the field, and they obviously expect that the field is going to grow. And if they aren't leaders in that field or up, up with, the, with the, the biggest, they will lose an edge. Yeah. And this is what they are forced to do. If they're forced to do it, that's very different to saying, you know, we've been planning for years to take over whatever it is, and now we've implemented our plan. This is, you know, if they're being pushed into it, it's, uh, you can see that the boots thing so far is a mistake because it's gone to lower lows. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. It's, I'm, I'm just thinking of the responsibility for the people involved. That is can you imagine making those decisions? Oh, remarkable, for sure. And you look at, I mean, yeah. even like CVS, right? They, they're not even at all-time highs right now as well. They were up at $84. And they, they with Aetna, you yes. remember? They, so they made it down, changing. though. CVS was just at $51 as of this calendar year back in May, and quite a run now up to $72. So maybe, you know, KKR saying, hey, you know, we got CVS almost doubling 50% from that time, and you haven't seen that quite uh, high of appreciation because you had Walgreens boots trading at 49 and it really didn't get that type of a pop until this news broke where it was trading about 57 maybe last week even I, as recently as October 21st you were trading at $54. Look at this monthly chart at exactly the same time CVS pharmacy and drug uh, uh, stores all over the show it uh, makes a high in July of 2015. It's, it's got what I call the Chapman Wave two-bar reversal. It goes from 113.65 in July to a couple of pennies lower, 13.58 in August, and that was it. And it comes down. There's a pattern that I always talk about. It's called the Chapman Wave Roman Candle. When you start to trade, or you, the price goes halfway into the wick. Be careful because it can go all the way down to the bottom and take it out. And that's what it did. Look at it's that the same chart, pattern. Man. Folks, Interesting. we're going to come back in three minutes. We're going to talk to Basil a little bit about the workshop he's going to be doing a week from tomorrow, Tuesday, November 19th, talking about those formations, how he's trading in the market. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got markets just hanging out right where we started the program. Basil, Dow off 111, S&P is negative by 9, NASDAQ negative by 21. If you come on over to the front page of TFNN.com, you'll see right on there the opening call by Basil Chapman. Live subscriber event Tuesday, November 19th, 5 till 6.30. Basil's going to be in there talking about a comprehensive review of the Chapman way of techniques and market outlook ahead for 2020. And folks, when you do sign up, I'm just going to pull up to give you a quick glimpse. This is the kind of account subscriber area. You gain all of these archived webinars, okay? You get in there. You get all of those immediately. You also gain access immediately to the opening call where Basil's got all of his subscriber info, the opening call this morning, let alone he had one in there earlier on Sunday. Lots of good action going on. And Basil, if you could just talk about uh, what you'll be talking about a week from tomorrow for your subscribers that, of course, that 90-minute webinar will be archived right after you're done with it. Absolutely. I will just first of all explain that in the, ba in the basic concept of the Chapman Wave starting off when I used to hand chart with pencil and engineering paper and a little ruler, um, I found that if you can identify the lowest low bar on the left side, you want to see moving to the right, you want to make the most obvious low bar a starting point to count the waves. If you count each successively higher peak, I alphabetize them and it goes from A to P, B to C to D, E, F, and G. But it's really the fourth highest peak that we start to look at and expect other things could happen. It could recycle higher to a whole new uh, set of peaks. It could turn around and be a very sharp decline. I look at only three patterns, straight down, straight up, arch formation, cup formation, and then you can, of course, get a combination. I'll talk about when you take the left side, out, uh, left side low away, um, that support disappears. When it, I made it red because when you take that left side low out, it can go much lower. And on the right side here, you can see there's a Y, inverted Y. If you take that left side high out on the upside, you can go higher. So I try to keep it as simple as possible. And then at a certain point, it starts to get a little more complex. But the simplicity of it is really important. You can see in the Dow monthly chart, we're in leg D. So this is a very important moment. We've got a time sequence that's 11 months from the January high. I like to talk about these time sequences. You can see what's happening. You've got 11 months from the January 2018 high to the December low. This is the 11th month. 
and we're looking at leg D in the 11th month. So that makes it very important right now. Sure. The fact that it has gone to do is, D is also very important. I need to see the MAGD, the moving average convergence divergence. I'll talk about that. It hasn't yet crossed positive in the monthly, and yet it has in the weekly. But look, even the weekly, we've got an eight-week cycle that goes from the, uh, the July 19th high of 27,398, pulls back to the August low, and then it makes a high of 27,306, uh, so September the 13th, pulls back, and once again, we've got a time sequence. So we've got the eighth week occurring right now uh, with a new high. So these are very important to me because things happen when you get these time sequences. I talk about the strength of these moving averages. You can see on the left side chart, the daily chart, this green line is the nine-period exponential moving average. The black line is the 14-period moving average. And we haven't seen the price go underneath 27,440, which is the nine-period moving average support. Okay. So the reason why I've said to subscribers, I think we're going to have a rolling correction here, not, unless there's a six or 700-point sharp decline to go all the way under the 14 period moving average, we could just see the sideways rolling action until you start to see price break down and start to move under the 9 and then under the 14. That's what it takes to get a really uh, important sell signal. There's even a chance we could make a D here above 27,774, but everything about it based on the unbalanced volume, something I talk about in terms of volume, that's the way I use it. It's a, a total, you add the totals of every up day and you subtract a down day and there's a running total. And right now the unbalanced volume is the one clue that says getting a little toppy here. So I like to talk about things that are very practical. So that's what, and I'll show the stocks that we've had, that we've got, uh, why we're holding them, why we've had some really nice trades uh, using this particular methodology, and why we can even go for the very long term. We, we've got the dollar long from April of 2018. Here's how important those peak D, the fourth highest peak in, on the 1st of October at 99.67. The daily makes a peak D. That's the same PD at 99.62 that turned out to be the weekly sell mode. And then the, the monthly is in a leg D, just like the Dow was in a leg D. So this is a D that could make a peak if in, in November there's no new high above 99.67. Okay. So I show these things in a very practical way. Nice. Well, folks, I encourage you to check it out right on the front page of TFNN.com. You can check that out. And, of course, to get back to that page, and Basil, I was in there checking out your opening call this morning. I know you were putting out kind of a message to subscribers, asking for any feedback, any questions they can ask you in there. So I encourage everybody, go sign up. You can email Basil ahead of time, talking about maybe questions you have about what he's been covering. And uh, Basil's a great presenter, folks. Does a great job. Normally, sometimes, you know, we do 60 minutes. Basil needs to do 90 minutes. He's got a lot to say coming up a week from tomorrow. And the, uh, the other thing is, yes, uh, if you have questions about what we're looking at, the methodology, just send them over to me. I, I love to answer these questions. And that will be uh, in the webinar. I'll include some of them. In the, I have already started to include in my presentation Perfect. for the webinar. And that is Basil Chapman at TFNN.com, correct? Correct. Perfect. Uh, Basil, if we can jump around to a couple others. Uh, Disney, if you don't mind. Disney, last week in the news with their earnings. This week, I imagine they'll be in the news as well as they are actually launching their streaming service, facing a little bit of headwind, though. F trading lower, Disney down nine tenths of percent today, 136.71. They actually made to 141 and change yesterday, but they did come into that earnings announcement at about 132.50 or so. The market liking what they had to say. They beat across the board, but the market really interested as to what they're going to do with this. They're making some partnerships with Amazon devices and so forth. And I was just kind of curious what you're looking at for Disney as they kind of get into the streaming arena. This is where I like to look at the chart formations, and I try to ignore everything else that's going on with Disney. And I said about three months, I think maybe four months ago, that I thought that there was a chance that Disney would be making 
uh, something that I call a hat trick top. And what that means is if my monthly chart is starting to look toppy, I look at the weekly chart because if the weekly chart isn't giving anything like a sell signal, that monthly is not going to work because the, the, the weekly it leads the, the monthly. But sure. wait a minute, the daily leads the, the weekly. So I like, like to look at I'm setting everything up in order. And then when we finally get a sell signal, and that was at 147.15 on uh, the 29th of July, uh, that was that was the last high that I was looking at, um, and that was a peak D. And then we started to come down. And I said, we've got to be careful. I know there's a lot of talk going on with Disney, but at this particular moment, it looks to me like there's a chance that Disney's going to take a long-term breather, meaning. Um, the monthly chart is saying it won't be just a quick uh, couple of weeks and then we make a new high. It could be three to six months. And I just got an email. I'm, I'm still a member of the Musicians Union. And they're talking about tell Disney to fairly negotiate. Uh, I'll tell you what they're saying about streaming for musicians. It's tough out there for musicians. So uh, that's part okay. of it as well. There's the take. We will find out three to six months. I am a super long, long-term long bull on Disney, but that's like oh, five to ten years to etc. But we'll find out. Stay tuned, folks. Basil and I come right back for the last segment of the I'm show. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman talking about the new way that we take content with streaming. And, and Basil, I know you are a great musician yourself, and it's amazing how many different facets facets of the world you know this plays into. And you were just talking about in the music side of things in Disney, how that uh, what is going on. So this uh, the um, musician American, American Federation, um, what is it called? American Federation of Musicians uh, sent out something just a few minutes ago. Uh, uh, Disney is launching their new streaming service, Disney Plus. Tomorrow, they're expecting 60 to 90 million subscribers in the next five years and billions in revenue. But they refuse to negotiate a fair contract for the musicians to score their films and television shows. I just wanted to, you know, we were talking a moment about CV, about a moment ago about CVS and Walgreens. Just what, what what companies have to do, and we were talking about with Scott about Macy's. If you don't leapfrog into a whole new uh, um, mode of doing something, you can be left behind in a second. So Disney's kind of has no choice but to do this. But at the same time, the people who actually make it work, like yeah. uh, uh, you know, like like uh, the musicians, like the cinematographers, and videographers. something that I hadn't even thought of. And we all know those amazing Disney songs. I mean, they make yeah. some of those movies. They really do. The Lion King. I mean, that's you know, but uh, there, there's there's too many to name. Um, and I wonder how that plays into things. And, you know, corporate America, man, these companies, they're vicious the way that they fight for every dollar, whether it's against their workers, whether what it is. Um, but... Yeah, it's, it's uh, vying against one another. And, it's, you know, it's the, the nature of it. It's the way it has to be, I guess. But, it's it's wow, interesting, it man. Tough. And we so will I, find I know, out. Yeah, I, I know there was a discussion just a moment ago about Boeing. I thought maybe if you wanted to look at Boeing, I'm talking about those peak Ds. Boeing at 446.01 on the 1st of March. All right, and Basil, then, that's it, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Well, you can cover it at noon, all right? How I'll about that? Basil, thank show. you as always. Check out his program opening call, folks, on the front page. We'll be right back.